You're listening to the Bulldog Insider Podcast, sponsored by Essentia Health. It only takes one step, twist, or crunch to know something doesn't feel right. Essentia Health's orthopedic and sports medicine team gets you back to doing what you love with commitment, resilience, intention. We're here to keep you moving forward. Visit EssentiaHealth.org to learn more about orthopedics and sports medicine like nowhere else. Hello and welcome to the Bulldog Insider Podcast, brought to you by Essentia Health. I'm Matt Wellens, the Bulldogs hockey beat writer at the Duluth News Tribune and the Rink Live. And I'm Zach Schneider, the television voice of UMD Hockey on My Nine Sports. Last week on the podcast, we kicked things off, or I should say dropped the puck on the season, uh, with an Olympic gold medalist, Ashton Bell, joined us. If you missed that episode, go back and check it out. This week on the podcast, we go from a Olympic gold medalist to legitimate movie star. Can we say that, Zach? Yep, one of the co-stars, at least. Uh, along with Kelly Hinseth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Kelly uh, Kelly Hinseth and Matt Halverson had, uh, what is it, ro- role parts? Role, supporting roles. Supporting roles. Supporting yeah. roles in the movie. This week on the podcast, he's also not just a movie star, he's a junior forward for the UMD men's hockey team. From Hermantown, one of the stars of the documentary Hockey Land, welcome to the podcast, Blake Biondi. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. Disclosure, I should throw this in here blake is uh got an nil deal with the rink live right we're, we're you're still with the rink live yes yeah i am i'm totally left on the dark on on all <laughs> this all uh, this stuff so blake partners with us on on helping promote the rink live it's not why we have him on the podcast though we have him on here to talk about the hockey land documentary if you haven't seen it haven't heard about it it's a film featuring uh the 2019-20 Hermantown Hawks and the Eveleth Gilbert Golden Bears hockey teams. It follows the players, coaches, and their families throughout the 2019-20 season. The film really tries to capture the essence of high school hockey in the state of Minnesota and, and what it means to the communities of, of Hermantown and Eveleth and Gilbert. Blake, you and, and your family were, were featured prominently in the film along with uh, the Golden Bears. Elliot uh, Van Orsdal, some other players were also on, on both the Hawks and, and Golden Bears, but they really kind of zeroed in on, on the two of you. To start off, as someone who, who lived lived it, playing high school hockey that 2019-20 season growing up in Minnesota how would you rate the film and and how do you feel it did kind of capturing the spirit of hockey in Minnesota high school hockey in Minnesota I mean I loved the film obviously the the presence of just showing showing the culture we have up here was the biggest thing that they were trying to establish and then obviously with the cool little just features on how you know as as being a documentary you got to have different storylines and I think they did a great job choosing the storylines um and then and then like I said just looking at the culture of northern Minnesota hockey in one aspect and then Hermantown hockey and then obviously Eveleth on the other side and sometimes you don't even look at like different things Eveleth's going through and and sometimes you just view them as like all right we got to beat these guys tonight but you look at it, it was cool watching after especially a couple of years later that it's like oh wow yeah they're going through some stuff too and some historic major historic changes for for their community and and so gave me a great perspective actually. As you're going through that 1920 season, kind of take us through how did how did you get approached by the documentary crew, and and did you have any idea at the time that that you would be featured so prominently in this film? Yeah, I was. Uh, I can't remember if it was in the Hippodrome or the or the Snake Pit in Greenway, but it was in one of those locker rooms my junior year, and uh, and Tommy Haynes came up to came up yeah he just he talked to coach pat andrews and said hey we're going to be coming in can we just interview a couple of your guys and it was me and like indio dowd and maybe darian goats i can't remember who was there and he just he's and we had no idea at the time like we know we kind of said hey it might be you know documentary crews coming in they're trying to just get get a little story to see what see what's going on with us and and at the time we were kind of like all right well is this really you know if it is a thing like is it going to even get big at all like where's it going to be and then so really didn't know what was going to happen and then and then that senior year, I came back from Sioux City, and and I remember the first first couple of days they were, I mean, they were just, I was mic'd up. We, I was just there. They were in our face all the time, and it actually was pretty annoying to be honest. Right away, I was like, oh my gosh, like this is gonna be like all year long. And that's and, why he's good putting up with us now, Zach. Yeah. We are nothing compared to <laughs> compared to what he had to deal with that senior year of high no. school. And I think they knew they were, but they're doing their job, right? They they have to get a full blown documentary. And honestly, now they're I mean, it's amazing. Like they're great people. We have a great relationship and it's friendship that'll last a lifetime, honestly, with between, you know, Tommy and, and 
brother and then even just myself and then indio and, and their family with them it's it's they're great people so it was actually got way easier went really smooth and and really enjoyed it honestly throughout the year how much did that change the senior year of high school hockey for you uh having the cameras and the crews and everybody in in areas that media is normally not present right you're used to dealing with you know people like matt and myself uh yeah. you know outside the locker room outside your home outside you know your sweetheart dance where the crew was you know for high <laughs> yeah. school for a high school senior that had to to change the senior year that you had at hermantown no absolutely it did and i wouldn't say it was you know better or worse it was cool it was a cool experience and i think in aspects of it being a good thing it, it was definitely a, a fantastic thing because it captured everything throughout that senior year i mean all the i mean we'll have that for our life which is amazing and then even just this i mean obviously the big things are like hey you made the state tournament you know winning mr hockey and and but I mean even more the, the more important things that I know I'll look back on and even I mean all my best friends look back on is definitely those moments where like the sweetheart dance or even just on the outdoor rinks and and they capture different moments like that that those are the things that last forever and I think just having that in a full documentary is is, is really special so pull back the curtain just quickly for us it it seemed all super authentic and and yeah. I was talking with Matt before we started recording they left some parts in that I think you would otherwise maybe take out from both teams yeah. with Gilbert and from Hermantown and I thought that was that was good it gave us a, a look that we haven't seen maybe into high school hockey and the players and the coaches and and everybody that is part of it but with it being a documentary were there times when they made you do something again enter a locker room again do a hockey drill again or was that pretty much you just went about your life and they cut it down once the season was over no i i yeah i think it was a, like just straight authentic i don't remember one time going like hey can we do this again i think well i shouldn't say yeah small small different things nothing like no drills no like or maybe it was it was, it was more like drills remember there was times where we were like Zach Kylan or Joey or myself, they kind of just zoomed in on us, just stick handling or just like even like face to face shots on the ice. That was kind of the only thing I could really think of. Otherwise, off ice stuff within our lives, like there was nothing that was like, hey, say this again. Like that was funny. But no, it was just, they just took things. I think they have so much to take it from anyways, like just hours and hours. I mean, Tommy said like he could, he, has, he could make three different documentaries out of this thing because there's just so much film. So honestly, no, he just, we just lived our life and they were there and, and, like I said, they was honestly not awful. It was actually more fun than the not towards the end because they're just they're just great people. So, so how often your senior year? You said thousands and thousands of, of hours of video. How often were you wearing a, a microphone, being followed around by by cameras? Whether it's in a, a day, yeah. a week, a month, what was what was it like? I think you know that I know they had different times getting into school. They'd have passes and stuff, and so you'd be. Filmed off just, I mean, thankfully not taking a test or anything, so I could focus on that. But, I mean, just even walking around lunch or, I mean, just, yeah, just going from class to class, they'd have, I remember just being, being camera behind me or, or mic'd up, and then a lot of practices. And then, like I said, a lot of a lot of fun times, too, where they were just there to kind of hang out with us. Like, I know we, like, like I mentioned earlier, just we were on the outdoor rink and, and had a big, just big, like, family dinner thing in the, in the in the warming shack out of Hermantown, and they were there enjoying it with us, and the, the cameras were there, obviously, but that was where we were just being ourselves, and it and didn't feel like, oh, gosh, I got to put on a face. I mean, we just were ourselves, so. Did you have the option of ever telling them, like, no, not now? Yeah, there was times in games I just like I just took it off, I think, and and multiple times I was like, all right, and and sometimes I mean I know I think I think uh, coach had a, had a rule and he just said you know, you know when my door is shut you know the door is shut and when he's got to talk to the team or even just within the within the coaching staff that door was shut and and they were extremely respectful of that and and I think that was what what made that relationship and I think what probably made the documentary so successful too because we were able they were able to it was just a solid balance they were able to get what they needed and we were still able to go about our live and our lives and actually you know not feel like oh gosh they're always here like come on so you mentioned coach Pat Andrews um I actually thought we talk about st the coaches were also featured pretty prominently in in this documentary and, and I thought coach Andrews was especially in, insightful it was it was great to hear his insight in, into the game and, and, and life. What did you learn about Coach Andrews that maybe you hadn't realized back then or even now? You know, what stuck out to me, I mean, I you always know about, no, like I knew it about him. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of pressure coming from, from Coach Plant. That was what, I mean, the media was all over it. People in the city, it was all, we're all over the city of Hermantown were all over it. I'm like, I can't imagine anybody dealing with it but I know him and how he is mentally he did a fantastic job and he'll say he struggled and not admit it but I know I know that 
I know he struggled and and he uh, like I said, it's mentally he's I learned I've learned so much from him in, in three years mentally, just the mental side of the the uh, probably just life in general more than anything, but just the mental side of things. And I think just going in that senior year when when it when he said like, hey, you know, I know there's I, yeah, I wake up and sometimes I. I think about his you know, just wins and losses, and, and like you say, he made Joe. Well, obviously, probably should be paying attention to you know his family and his kids, and and actually you know his his health. But that was something that I I realized you know he did have a lot of pressure on him, like just a lot, especially you know getting the state that year and then not getting that back to that championship game, and then then my junior year just not even getting there all together. There was so much pressure, like it was. A critical year for Herman Tonaki and himself. So I think looking back at that, especially after, after knowing we made it, it's like okay, maybe don't think about it as much. But that was huge for everybody, and I think for, especially for him and just just his everything in his life, I guess. So um, yeah, I learned a lot. I've just learned so much from that man, and and our relationship is so strong too. So and that's the best part. We've always we'll always be there for each other, and we'll always be talking hockey and and just life in general. So Matt mentioned that you were one of the players on Hermantown that the documentary decided to zero in on and obviously that was with good reason you came into your senior year with a lot of expectations at Hermantown but at that point you hadn't been drafted into the NHL you hadn't obviously gotten yet to UMD you just missed out on the state tournament as a junior so there was a lot left to learn maybe that season about Blake Biondi the hockey player Mm -hmm. and then in the first five minutes of the film you're tied two to two with Evleth Gilbert in the season opener and coach Andrews lets the whole locker room have it and that's one of the moments that we don't always get to see right you know we kind of assume what's happening in the locker room but we don't get to see it we don't get to hear it and for that to be in the documentary early on do you remember how you felt at that moment, all the cameras are around, all the pressure in the world, not just on Coach Andrews, but on, on the players. And all of a sudden, you're in a dogfight with Evelyn Gilbert in the yeah. season opener. Yeah, I, I remember coming back and honestly thinking kind of that same thing, like, wow, okay, well, we're back here and it's a senior year and we didn't make the state last year. And I just kind of remember, I did, I remember this exact moment. I remember looking around and my one of my best friends, Drew Sam's right next to me, cameras all over. And honestly, we're like, we're going to be okay. And we just we just kind of look at each other like we're just fine. And coach reamed us, but he comes back like he always does. And hey, he just hey, I do it because I love you guys. And yeah, he puts most pressure on us because he should. Like we have that tradition of success in Hermantown, and and that's something we we get to live with. And I think it's a great honor. And and at the same time, he came back and just said we're gonna be just fine. We looked around, went, went to the third. Thankfully, he scored a couple more goals, <laughs> beat him five two, and took a deep breath, and then went on with our season and like, we just we were able to move on but yeah like that was a that was a pivotal moment honestly because i remember looking around like holy smokes this is all right we're back here so it was fun though that was a butt chewing in the second intermission no it was yeah yeah harder to hear that at the time or re-watch it all these years later no i i it wasn't it wasn't awful at the time i think i mean that happens that's happen. that's gonna happen in a lot of games but that one was that one was different just because it was kind of it was almost odd that it was that way because like obviously the cameras are there for us and Eveleth and the first game was Eveleth and now it's 2-2 going to the third and I mean you lose that game what happens and seeding and whatnot so it's like it was kind of surreal to be honest that's kind of the feeling you felt it was like this is this is weird like all this kind of coming together once but that was more the feeling it wasn't like May, oh my gosh the pressure's insanity right now is just like this is odd almost how I saw it's just weird coincidence but I wouldn't say it was it was awful no is it good preparation for what you're experiencing now at UMD, uh, where obviously expectations are yeah. sky high as always every year? There's media all around. The community cares an awful lot about this program, just like they do Hermantown. So it feels like you step from that world yeah. into a world that's exactly the same now as a Bulldog. Yeah, and I think, like you said, it was great preparation. I mean, especially in Hermantown, you, you go from growing up in your youth program and all you want to do is be a Hermantown Hawk and, and win a state championship, win Mr. Hockey, and, and just be on the varsity team. And then you get there, and like you said, the media is all over, and then it's just that that feeling of like that's that added pressure. Like, yep, we, we got to get there. We got to get to the state championship. Got to, I guess, got to get to state. I mean, that that's expected, it feels like. And, uh, and then I think that was that was the biggest thing. I just with all those different added pressures, I think I learned that at a really young age, and that's what's been able to really help me, especially at UMD or even just dealing with media or or just added pressure of life in general. It's just been able. I, I learned it at a young age, thankfully, from honestly a lot from Coach Andrews um, and just people that that have helped me growing up in in, in Hermantown. So that transition to UMD that it helped for sure. 
you mentioned, you know, some of the moments you're going to cherish about this documentary isn't necessarily the, the on ice stuff, but those moments with, with your friends off the ice. What did you learn about, about your friends and, and your teammates and, and their families and what they were going through that season that maybe you didn't know or, or realize at the time? Honestly, we're a really tight knit group of friends. I, I, I don't, there wasn't a whole lot that, you know, you see in the movie, you're like, oh, I missed that. I think, honestly, not a whole lot. I just we just knew what was going on. You know how it is in a small town anyway. So it was, everyone kind of knows everything, but also we're just close friends. So I'd say everything you kind of saw, you knew what was going on and you're there to help. So what about the Golden Bears? How did your perspective of, of what they were going through that year on the ice and off of it how how did that change you kind of touched a little bit on that earlier yeah. in the podcast here yeah like I said I think you know as a competitor you go in and you're like you don't even think about it it doesn't even cross your mind you just you just you're just going out you're preparing the way you prepare and then you go and play them and you you want to beat them and then I guess now obviously especially years later you look at you look at what was you know going on there and and you kind of forget about the fact that it was their last year in Neveleth and I mean Neveleth is was I mean, a massive hockey town back in the day, and you look at that, the, the, just the history there is, is insanity, and then you look at how it's going to, you know, the, the pressure they actually did feel like, hey, this is the last Evelyn Gilbert team at all. Like, that's that's a lot of pressure just to even feel for those kids. And then um, pride, I mean, the younger guys that are like, all right, this is my last year with these guys, now I have to go and join rival Virginia. Like, that's got to be just weird too. So looking at all that was very different. I mean, it changes your perspective totally, and you think about just – way different things and even just individual aspects with different kids that have higher skill that that you know don't end up developing in different different ways and as you just look at it, it's like oh it's it's way different it's way different up there so one thing i appreciated about the documentary was it, it reminded us of the history of Evelyn gilbert right yeah. it used to be such a powerhouse in, in the state and in high school hockey starting with john masich and moving on with all the state titles they won back uh you know way back when and Hermantown didn't always wasn't always the powerhouse that it is. Hermantown grew into a, a really strong hockey community that it is today. And one thing I appreciated is that Evelyn Gilbert, whether it was Elliot Van Orsdale or Jeff Torrell, throughout the entire film, they didn't talk about Hermantown in some of the ways that we've heard people talk about Hermantown, as in they should be double A. What are they doing? Why do we have to play them? It was we want to play mm-hmm. Hermantown. We want to get back to the prominence that we used to have. How much pride do you take watching that back, knowing even whatever small part you had in helping Hermantown get to where it is, which is probably the community that's being chased, at least in among northern communities, being chased the most as far as uh, high school hockey programs go? Yeah, I mean, an insane level of pride for Hermantown, obviously, looking at, I think that line really stood out to me when, when he, when the, I think it was a historian in Eveleth just said, you know, at some point overnight, Eveleth, you know, was that, that massive team, or that massive hockey town just kind of it switched over and it went to Hermantown, and, and now Hermantown's just that, the the team in the north, I guess, so, yeah, I'd say it's a, a huge level of pride, and, and we've had so many great players, so many great coaches, youth people, um, just parents that have helped the develop Hermantown into what it is and you know you hope that stays like that forever and I don't you know you don't know the future but I know that you know we're doing the right things right now and just to point out what you said about you know what just different people from Eveleth and what how they talk about Hermantown that was that was a great level of respect because they just competed they didn't work they didn't look for excuses they just went out and went out and just okay we want we was what we want we want to play Hermantown like I think that's the best view you can look at it and all aspects, especially within hockey and the way things are in the north, it's just it's, I think that's a great aspect to look at it, and I think it will only make you better. So, you mentioned the that article. I was trying to remember when I was talking to Zach a little bit about this earlier. Coach Andrews kind of brought it up too when I believe his team was the second Hermantown team mm-hmm. that that made it to state, and how excited I love the footage that they dug up and yeah. and and showed of him and and how much it meant back then because he was playing on the underdog team, the pro, the lesser known program. You could say the have not that didn't have everything. And, and Eveleth Gilbert, he talked very highly, you know, Pat Andrews knows his hockey industry, hockey history. Cause he talked very highly of, of Eveleth Gilbert. And at the end, it kind of got me thinking they're showing Elliot's story and they're kind of talking about where all you guys are going. You're going on and winning, you know, Minnesota, Mr. Hockey, and then drafted and onto the Bulldogs. And, Elliot was having had a phenomenal season, one of the, the better seasons there with with Eveleth Gilbert, but he wasn't getting that that recognition. Blake, I wonder if at all like seeing Elliot's story, if it made you 
consider your hockey path and 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 where you are and everything that I guess did you ever put yourself in Elliot's shoes and think what if I was playing for the program that you know wasn't at the top right now um what if like the ships never crossed in the night and Eveleth Gilbert just kept rocking on as this you know state hockey power and, and Hermantown was you know fighting for for respect did, did any of that ever ever cross your mind as you watched Elliot's story or yeah, I mean a little. I think at the same time, I, I also grew up playing with Will, William Troutwine, and 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 he's he's done it. He's doing it. He's going out and playing Division One hockey, and and I think I give a lot of respect to those kids for sure. But I think it's also doable. I know it's you know what for whatever reason, there's a lot of variables to why things don't work out, and and but I think you know Troutwine's doing it. I, I, you saw he's had a great couple years in, in the NA. I mean, he's what two, three years in there already. Has played mm-hmm. really well, and obviously got a verbal commitment out to Holy Cross, and so he's done it. I think it's. Uh, I know it's hard. It's probably harder. I think just just competition wise up there isn't you know as as strong. So that development aspect is is harder to get better. But um, for opportunity, I think. I think it's there. I think, I mean, I just think it's an example that Troutwine did it. And it just shows how you know, much respect you give Troutwine for, for doing it. And I wish him the best of luck because it's, it's, he's a great kid. And that's cool. It's, it's really special what he's doing. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to have more with Blake Biondi. Talk a little more uh, movies and, and get into the upcoming Bulldogs hockey season. You're listening to the Bulldog Insider Podcast brought to you by Essentia Health. Hey there, my name is Wyatt Buckner, and I'm the host of the Duluth News Tribune Minute Podcast. Hear the most important news of the day, including weather and sports from Duluth, Minnesota, and from around the Northland. Join me and my fellow reporters as we take you through the local news you need to start your day. Episodes are released Monday through Friday and are available on Apple, Spotify, and wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you for supporting local journalism. Hi, I'm Maria Lockwood, a reporter with the Superior Telegram. Explore Superior and Douglas County history with me on Archive Dive, a monthly podcast available at superiortelegram.com or wherever you listen to podcasts. Welcome back to the Bulldog Insider Podcast, brought to you by Essentia Health, Orthopedics, and Sports Medicine. They're proud to be the team physicians for the UMD Bulldogs and provide sports medicine care to more than 25,000 student-athletes in the community to ensure they can compete at the highest level while protecting their long-term health and athletic futures. Thanks to Essentia Health for their sponsorship of this podcast. I'm Matt Wellens, joined by co-host Zach Schneider and our guest Blake Biondi. Uh, we're going to close things out, like I said, a little more movie talk and also preview the UMD men's hockey season, which gets underway October 1st through the 2nd at Amsoil Arena against Arizona State. Blake, what's your all-time favorite hockey movie? What do I, do I have to say Hockey Land now? Or? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, you don't have to say no, Hockey I know. Land. I'd say, yeah, Miracle on Ice for sure. Miracle yeah, still up there. So, yeah. Zach, how about you? Uh, yeah, that one had a uh, more storybook ending, I guess, than uh, Hockey Land. We were yeah. saying if uh, if Disney <laughs> made Hockey Land, Eveleth Gilbert would be in the state tournament yeah, at the end go. of that one. But, <laughs> yeah, but it was true. a documentary. Uh, Slapshot's always up there. Uh, Miracle or Slapshot. Yeah, see, Miracle's just just it for me. Yeah. yeah. What's old is often new in Hollywood. If you could star in any remake of a hockey movie, what would it be? See, now Slapshot would be fun. To- <laughs> yeah, right. I have no... Ho- acting skills and can barely skate so i probably wouldn't qualify for that movie but blake <laughs> actually you might i might actually yeah, that would right. be the one you could be the one you'd be in yeah <laughs> that's the one i could do yeah blake is there a hockey movie you would like to i mean i don't know easier to be in a documentary than actually have to go out there and go act, act right yeah i mean it'd be cool to score that game winning goal like mike ruzioni did at miracle well, otherwise i don't know <laughs> If I could do the whole, the whole movie acting acting like him, but can you do a Boston accent? Yeah, I, I couldn't. I can't. So that's why that one's out. Never mind. <laughs> what happened to all of Joey Pierce's lines in Hockey Land? He had as much FaceTime as you. Like I kept seeing Zach on it. Like Joey just keeps popping up, and I'm, I'm like, when are we gonna hear from Joey in this movie? No lines. Did did they cut all his lines out? I don't know. I don't know what happened. He's a quiet guy, so maybe that's what it was. All right, that's my my Joey Pierce joke of of the movie. I'm like. Uh, I remember looking at that, and I was actually thinking, oh, we should bring Joey on here. And then I'm like, they didn't give Joey a mic, or his mic bust out of work or something in the movie. Who on this year's Bulldogs would you like to see a documentary crew follow around for an entire season? <laughs> that one's tough. Here at the News Tribune, we've 
always wanted John Nawoski to be followed around by a, a documentary crew for, for a year. Who on who on this year's Bulldogs would know. make for good documentary? I, think, I mean, my linemate Dom James would be hilarious. It'd be funny and it'd be interesting. Is he the funniest guy on the team? He was voted hands that, down yeah, the funniest guy at that World, World Juniors Junior, team. Yeah. He's he's very funny, but I I that one's tough because <laughs> Kyle Vettens is hilarious. There are some guys that are probably – Probably more funny, honestly, just characters. But he's a Dahmer's character too, so it, I'd say Dom. Yeah, that'd be. See, this is why awesome. we need documentaries because I've never heard Dominic yeah. James tell a joke. I've never We're heard him say Dom- anything funny, and now <laughs> all of a sudden he's this stand-up I don't know comedian. If it's funny, it's just, it's not even the comedy. It's just like he's just awesome to be around. He's just got a great energy to him. I think that's more. It's not even like the he's funny, but it's I wouldn't say like jokes or anything. It's just like he's just just fun to be around all the time. Got to remember, you got twelve new teammates. <laughs> yeah, so that's the Bulldogs. Also hard. Yeah. So how about last year's Bulldogs team? Okay. Oh yeah, that one, I don't know if that's even Ben Pat. Pat, I was gonna say that would be it. That's, that's exactly what I was gonna say. Ben Pat or like a Rosenbaum, just like <laughs> different, like this interesting, like a, this wide variety of different things going on. Just both really smart. So in school and stuff would be, would be fun to be around. I, yeah, I'd say Pat or Rosie, Pat or yeah. Pat or Rosie. Teammate will go past or present, most likely to be a Hollywood star. Oh, it's hard. I, I I have no idea. You got to give me some examples or some ideas. Ryan Fanti dresses oh, like a perfect. Hollywood that's star. It. You got it. That's it. Ryan right Fanti dresses like Ryan Fanti. No, that's looks it. like hands down could Fanti. be mistaken for like if you didn't know who was who in the Bulldogs locker room after the game, yeah. you'd be like, oh, that's someone's agent walking by. Yes. <laughs> no, Fanti. That's it. That's Who's also the agent for half the NHL with, with his his suits? Fanti, Zach. Yeah, I just I've only met him the once here before the season starts, but Derek Dashke strikes me as somebody yeah. that could he's got that persona about him he does yeah he does good charisma on him but uh, yeah fanties that's that's it right there yeah all right a little hockey here how much time have you spent talking actual hockey compared to this hockey land film right now just sit in what just in, just in, li- in life i feel like everything for you is you've been yeah. around a lot talking hockey land hockey here. yeah well lately a lot of hockey land i guess from the movie but you know, it's not even close to how much hockey. It's not even close. Yeah. What series do you have circled on on your calendar this season? What jumps out at you at, on that schedule right away here? I mean, North Dakota is always right there. Unfortunately, I can't circle the Gophers this year. That one, that one stinks. We're not playing them. But does that does that hurt for you, Minnesota guys, not playing the Gophers? Oh yeah, we that one. I wish we played them bad. But does it hurt more not playing the Gophers or not playing Arizona State on the road? Yeah, that should, that'd be fun. <laughs> Eventually, maybe we'll get down there. I don't know. I know last they, time, they last time UMD played, played in Arizona, it was forty degrees. Oh, jeez. Now, granted, it was like zero in Duluth, but yeah, it's it was still, it, <laughs> it's still it was warmer. Like forty degrees down there. You led the team in goals last year with seventeen. Who winds up leading the team in goals at the end of this season? You're gonna bet on yourself or someone I, else? I bet on myself, but I think I know there's a lot of guys. We, we need goal scorers, so I hope I hope guys are really close. We're hoping right around. Uh, Right around, you know, high high number of goals with a couple, few of us at least. You're not gonna, you're you're gonna bet on yourself though. I mean, yeah, or, I, yeah. I think if you so. could name one teammate that's gonna score more than you this year, who do you think? I know Howard. I know Steve's can score. I know Steve's had 40 or something like that in USHL. Yeah, he put so up a lot of points he in the can, USHL. He can put some home for us this year. I know Howard can score, so he's. I mean, we need him to score for us. Um, I think Dahmer's underrated. He can he can score some goals too. It's just sneaky sneaky goals. So yeah, I think all, all of us. Who's the player the media should be talking about this preseason? But we'll, we won't. We're gonna, we're gonna skip gonna them skip for some reason. We know it's not gonna be you. Are we talking about Dom and Quinn? Like, I, I know we're gonna, we're gonna get them, but maybe even more. I think Quinn Olson and Dom right there. I got a goal. I mean, they're li- my line mates, but I think it's the truth. Like, and Quinn for sure, and Dom. I know Dom's been getting a good amount of press too, but I think right both of them for sure. Don't overlook those two. No, no, never. Even though it's going to be fun to talk about some of these new freshmen coming in, right? Well, yeah, that, yeah. I mean, obviously, we got a lot of them, too. So, you, I hopefully, you can get more than enough talking about them. Who is on your afternoon hockey league all star team, AHL? Big, big shakeup in, in AHL with, with Derek Plant uh, yeah. moving on here. Uh, I didn't play last year. I didn't play one game last year. I played my freshman year. So, I honestly, I haven't been, I don't know. I don't know who's the best guy. I know, obviously, Krause is. Probably, I mean, he's the vet out there now. Krause has I himself think, in, in in a Hall of Fame status on yeah, on there, which I he was, might be. He's been playing a long time. I think Chubb. I think they they have good chemistry there, but I think they usually like to recruit an older guy. 
I'm not sure if Dashkey. I don't know if they played a game yet, but I think yeah, they haven't played. They haven't played yet, so I think Dashkey might be going in and hopping on their team. So I think he could be he could be underrated this year. Are you not? You're not an afternoon hockey league no, guy anymore. I'm not anymore. No, no I, I played freshman year. I didn't play at all last year. I just kind of a superstition thing and just didn't do it. What's the superstition behind it? I uh, just I don't I don't know what it is. It's just kind of. I don't know, whatever know. you did last year do it again true, I know. It's, not, it, it worked a lot of like me yeah i guess me quinn and don working a lot of stuff after practice and then we just kind of never got in the game and just never ended up playing last year much ahl is a time commitment it is it it's ta- a time it, commitment sometimes it takes it, it games take 45 minutes sometimes it takes five you don't know what's going to happen so talk to jesse after practice today <laughs> we're recording this a couple of weeks before it comes out but i was like Thank you for not doing AHL today because there are a few times last year where I just got up waiting on Jesse <laughs> or someone in an AHL game, and I'm looking at the clock and going, this is going too long. Yeah. And and I know, and looking at Planner and Krause, they're not going to end this. Nope. So I'm, I I got to go. I can't sit here and watch this all day. Zach, anything else for for Blake? Hockeyland, it's uh, out in theaters in Minnesota and uh, I believe nationwide now and uh, streaming soon as as well. Yeah, I mean, you were always a pretty recognizable guy around town uh, in Hermantown for sure, and now in the greater Duluth community being a Bulldog. But, you know, have you noticed the last couple of weeks since it's released that you, you're back on the front page, so to speak? Yeah, I'd say more social media stuff more than anything. Nothing too crazy, like just out and about, but social media for sure, just like just people commenting on stuff and just getting tagged in different stuff that Hockey Land is posting or just more people just, just I guess, hopping on and following you or different stuff like that on social media i'd say that's that was more the more the thing i'm i guess yeah i'd say for sure social media yeah it's been a fun couple of weeks yeah. watching everybody react to it and people are seeing it in increments sure. and so it's been fun yeah go check out the documentary either in theaters or, or when it comes out in, in, in streamings i thought it was i thought it was re- really well well done that's all the time we have with blake this week uh thanks for joining us to talk about uh hockey land and we'll get you back on here to talk more bulldog hockey maybe later this season all right, I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. You can find the Bulldog Insider Podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Subscribe and rate us. For more Bulldogs hockey coverage, visit therinklive.com and duluthnewstribune.com. Zach, quick summary of what's coming up on My9 uh, this season for anyone that missed it last week. With yeah, Ashton we Bell. start uh, when the season starts for the men here, October 1st and 2nd uh, against Arizona State. We've got every home game for them right now. Uh, CBS Sports is probably going to take uh, at least one or two of those as they – normally do uh we got road series hopefully for Mankato uh, and certainly for North Dakota and St. Cloud State uh, for the guys team. And then for the women's team, we've got most ever games we've ever done with that team, 11 games on the schedule starting next weekend. Thanks to our sponsor, Essentia Health, for their support of the Bulldog Insider podcast. And thanks to you all for listening each week. Let us know what you want to hear this season on Bulldog Insider. You can email uh, you can email me at mwellens at duluthnews.com or hit me up on Twitter at Matt Wellens. Thanks again to Blake my co-host Zach. We'll catch you all next week.